Hello my fellow crafters and welcome back to Inspiration for Cards. In today's video I'm going to be playing with alcohol ink and I'm going to be making a lot of backgrounds. Alcohol ink is such a fun medium to work with once you get the hang of it and I've made some beautiful backgrounds that we're going to be turning into cards. Now we made a lot of these. Um, I've turned it into six cards but I've made more backgrounds obviously. So these are the cards that we're going to be making today. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a voiceover because otherwise it would have been a very, very long video. So if you want to see how we make these fun backgrounds and how we turn them into cards, keep on watching. Now, if you haven't done so yet, please consider to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you will not miss out on any of my future videos. Now, without any further ado, let's dive in and make some cards. Have fun! Okay, I'm starting off with just putting some plain alcohol, 95% alcohol, on my Yupo um, and adding some colors of alcohol ink. These are um, alcohol inks from Ranger. The green one is called Clover. The red ones, I'm using two different ones. One is the alcohol Pearls in Deception and the other one is called Red Pepper. Beautiful, vibrant colors. Now I'm topping that up with some alloy in the color, let me think, Gilded. And I love the alloys, the movement they give and they, they really, yeah, it's, it's really typical stuff. It's, it's clutters together. Um, and on top of that, I'm dropping some alcohol solutions. So some blending solution. And that really makes a difference. So that's already the first card done. And we're speeding through this quite quickly because I'm making a lot of cards. So here I'm making a card again with the same color combination, using the red and green and putting some gold alloy on top of that. And I really like the movement of this alcohol ink. Now this Tim Holtz blower makes it really easy to blow the alcohol ink around on the Yupo. And because Yupo is plastic, it will not uh, sink into it so quickly. Now, if you like a spot, uh, you can just use your blower, just hold it up a bit higher, blow on it a few times, and then that will secure that spot. It will dry it in that shape. And otherwise, it's always best to leave the alcohol inks to dry, to just air dry. However, I'm going to be using a heat tool in a minute because I want some specific effects. But here is another background already done. Now, next, I'm going to experiment with just one color. Uh, I wanted to see what that would bring me. One color and then use some silver alloy in that. And you can really see the movement of that alloy. And uh, um, yeah, it's really coming back together and forming these lines. So I'm adding a bit more alcohol ink in color red and just blowing that around on the Yupo paper until I get the design that I like um, and then leave it to dry. And here you can see me blowing in a certain spot several times. But here I'm taking out my heat tool because I want some differentiation in the color. I'm, um, I want some uh, parts to dry so you can really see the darker lines on the edges of the puddles. And that's what you achieve when you dry the alcohol ink with the heat tool. Next, I'm going to go to some blue colors and I'm using Stream and Pool, both from Ranger, on the Tim Holtz Yupo paper. And I'm putting silver alloy on top of that. Now, the silver alloy reacts slightly different than the gold one, in my opinion, but still very nice. And combining that with alcohol ink and blending solution, it gives a very nice effect. Um, and I really like playing around with these alcohol inks. And I'm making a lot of backgrounds in one go because it's quite messy. And once you've got everything out, you might as well just go ahead and do it. Here again, I'm using a heat tool to dry uh, to get these darker colored edges and then blowing the, so the parts around that were not dry yet. Again, I'm putting down some plain alcohol and some green and red again. And now I'm putting some brown in between. It's, it's the color rust. And uh, to get a slightly different shade of background and then putting the gold, the gilded, I should say, alloy on top of that again. 
But again, I love playing around with alcohol inks. It's just giving so much movement and, and I really like the depth and color it gives. Um, and playing around with it is just plain fun. And if you don't like a spot, put some alcohol or blending solution on top of it again and you can continue to play around with it without uh, destroying anything. And in the end of the day, it's just paper. So just play around and have fun. And that's what I'm doing here, creating all these backgrounds. And I'm really having fun with this, let me tell you. And here's another one already finished. Next, I want to play around with two different colors. I'm using the Flamingo and Raspberry colors, both from Ranger, um, to create more of a pinkish reddish uh, background. And I'm adding the silver alloy to this for some contrast. But I really, again, I really like how these alloys play around. Um, again, just place some plain alcohol in the back, drop the alcohol on it and blow it around. That's all that's to it. No skills required. That's what I like. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just fun to do. And you can see the alloy moving around and cluttering together, forming these edges and lines. Um, and there I'm putting it to the side to dry. The majority I leave to dry in the air and just take the time because that's really what it's all about. Here I'm using the same blue colors as I did before, but I added the stone wash to it uh, to give it a bit more depth. That's a bit darker blue. And I'm creating this really pretty blue background. Uh, I'm going to do something really fun with this later on. You will see that I'm going to finish six cards uh, at the end of this video. And of course, I will show you the whole process behind that. That's why I'm speeding up this part quite a lot. But this background is definitely one of my favorites. Um, here I'm putting on the silver alloy and some blending solution. And yeah, this is really a cold, icy, sky-ish feeling to it. Yeah, I really, really like it. Um, just keep moving this ink around until you're happy with the background and then put it to the side and let it air dry. Leaving the alcohol inks air dry gives the most beautiful effects. They will keep moving. They will keep evolving. So letting them air dry is really the best thing to do. Next, I'm taking this Elizabeth Craft Designs Merry Christmas die. It's a beautiful die. And I'm going to use that to cut out a bunch of them. And I've cut them out of gold and silver and I'm going to layer them on white to give it some dimension. But this is what I'm going to be using on every single finished card. Here you see me layering them together. Gold, it's the Tim Holtz gold cardstock that I'm using and some Elizabeth Craft Designs white cardstock. Now, this is the first card we're going to finish. It's the pink and red one. And I'm going to use this die set from Elizabeth Craft Design. I will link everything down below in the description bar. And of course, on my blog, you will find the full details. I've cut these frames out with some adhesive at the back. And I'm going to frame this beautiful background. It's a very simple card, but yeah, it packs a punch, in my opinion. So I'm going to put some glue on that edge and I'm going to frame this card. Next, I'm going to take the die and the die is a bit too big if you want to use it in a portrait uh, position. But this is what I like about these Elizabeth Craft Design dies. You can quite simply alter them uh, by cutting off some pieces and then you have a piece that fits perfectly on top of your card. Now I'm using some sticky dots because it's a very intricate die and using these, these sticky dots make it very easy to uh, adhere it to the card front. There are little glue dots everywhere on the back now, just pressing this down and then it's already on there. Next, I'm going to put some embellishments on, but first I'm going to put the card front to the card base and then we are ready to embellish. Now I'm using some um, Studio Katja embellishments for this. These are beautiful uh, silver, um, yeah, how do you call them? Uh, dots, <laughs> silver dots that really make the card complete and then bring it all together. Now the glue that I'm using is the Art Glitter Glue and I love this stuff because it dries clear and it does not leave any residue. So uh, yeah, you see the white now, but once it's dried, you will not see it. And now here's the next example of a card that I've made using this black, the, the my favorite blue background. 
And what I'm going to be using for this is the Tim Holtz Snowflake set. And I'm packing these onto my card base, really jam packing it on there. And I'm going to use um, a technique that will remove the alcohol ink from the card. I'm using archival ink. Now I've got blue because if it leaves a bit of residue, it does not harm it. But uh, using the archival, archival ink, pressing it on there, and then I'm using a paper towel to wipe it off there. And it gives like a ghost-like impression of this stamp. And that is a really fun uh, way of giving some dimension to your alcohol ink backgrounds. Here you can see the white coming through. And yeah, it's a really fun way of doing it. Next, I'm going to take a square from Gina K. Let me see which one is it from the Gina K Master Layouts 3 set. Um, and I'm going to die cut that out to make a square. I'm going to do that from this and a slightly bigger one from silver that's going to function as a mat. Now I'm going to put these two together. Put my front on my mat layer. Beautiful silver, also from the Tim Holtz paper pack. And then I'm going to put that on the card base using um, my advanced tape glider. Love this thing. Put it on there. Then I'm going to take my Merry Christmas, the same one for all the cards. Put some glue on the back and put it on there. Now here I'm still debating white or silver, but I still go for the silver. The silver is the same silver as I used for the uh, second matte layer, so it all brings it together. Now it's on there and I am using the same Studio Katja embellishments to put on there to give it a bit more oomph. Not that the card really needs it, but yeah, I always like to put some embellishments on. And this is a fun bit of these beautiful backgrounds. You can really make a lot of cards quite quickly. Now we're moving on to the last card that I'm making on camera. And that's another blue background that I made. Again, the same sentiment, the same embellishments. Um, but I'm now using a long form background. Um, and that's also really fun to use these backgrounds dice to make a beautiful background. Now I'm putting on this one on some foam tape to give it some dimension and then put it on a background card. Um, I have these standard plain backgrounds already, not backgrounds, uh, card bases already folded, pre-done. And what I do, I just stick it on and then I get my Tim Holtz trimmer out and just trim off the bottom so that it's all nicely uh, on there. There we go. And again, I'm using the Elizabeth Craft Designs Merry Christmas to put it on there, um, making this card a landscape card so I don't have to trim it down. Put some glue on and put it on there. And again, already done. Just put on some embellishments, the same from Studio Katja, and uh, the card is done and ready to go in the mail for Christmas. Now, off camera, I made some other cards using the same techniques, etc. That's why I didn't film it here. I made the squares using the Gina K master layout set um, just with the gold mat. And I made this one using the same frame from Elizabeth Craft Design with the same embellishments, etc. So all in all, beautiful cards using alcohol inks as a background and really fun to make. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider to subscribe to my channel so you will not miss out any of my future videos. Thank you for watching this one and I see you for the next one. Bye.